And so now what we want to look at is another example of a different energy source providing heat to the steam generator. And it's using a gas turbine. When we looked at gas turbines, we saw the exhaust was at a high temperature. And so what could I use that high temperature exhaust for? I could use it to generate steam and have a steam power plant as well. And so let's look at how that works. And so I'm going to have a compressor. Goes out into a combustion chamber, into a turbine, and the turbine's going to produce a certain amount of power. <clears throat> and now the exhaust from the turbine goes into a steam generator. So the exhaust from the turbine goes in to the steam generator and provides the heat input to the steam generator. So if I have one, two, three, four, five. So this becomes the gas turbine. So it goes through this, and now I have a steam generator, and we'll have that go through a turbine. We'll do a simple ranking cycle. It doesn't mean that in practice they aren't more exotic, but we'll let for this. And now what we need, we're going to use a different numbering or labeling system. So we'll call this A, B, C, D. So that's our simple system that we have going on. And so what I'm looking at here is I looked at problem 1551. So I have this cycle going on, and I'm going to look at problem 1551. So in this case, you may want to stop and get problem 1551 and see what it says. So here, we're given R sub P is equal to 15. We're given 50 cubic meters per second, 300K, 100 kPa. So this is state one. So it's telling us state one here what's going into the gas turbine. We're told that T3 is 1700 K, and that T5 is 450 K. So what we're going to do, so we're given this information, so what we're going to do is be able to figure out, if I calculate T4, I can figure out what the energy is that's being provided here, so this is be the Q dot N, to the steam generator. But the total, the only heat in to the system is here in the combustion chamber. So now we'll go through and find the various state points that we need for the gas turbine cycle, then we'll do it for the steam turbine cycle. So, N dot one is P1, B1 dot over RT1 is 100 times 50 divided by 0 0.287 times 300. So N dot one is 58.07 milligrams per second. And what we're doing here is we're neglecting RFA. We're just finding the heat in. We're doing this in a simplified format so you see how to do it we can have the air-fuel ratio, but we're just going to assume that the properties of the substance going through here are air, and we're sort of speeding up the gas turbine analysis to see how this combines with this vapor power system. So Q dot N is equal to N dot times H3 minus H2 is equal to N dot C sub T3 minus T2. Q dot N is equal to 5807 times 1.0047 times 1700 minus T2, which is 650.8. And so I get Q dot N is equal to 
1.4 kilowatts. Now you're going to say, where did you get this from? And what I did, I didn't show you, but I'll show you now. So what we had to do is use the isentropic processes between 1 and 2. So T2 T2 is equal to T1 times P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. So this is for process 1 to 2. So T2 is equal to 300 times 15 to the 0 0.4 over 1.4. So we're, we're using the properties of air, as you can see. So I get that T2 is 650.8 degrees K. And while I'm at it, so I don't forget, T4 is equal to T3 times 1 over R sub P to the K minus 1 over K. So T4 is equal to 1700 times 1 over 15 to the 0 0.4 over 1.4. So that's going to be equal to 783.6 degrees K. So now I found, now I found T4. We know T5 was given. So I have this so I can find my Q per unit mass. And with the mass flow rate, I can find the total amount of heat flow. So now let's find out what W net is here. So remember part of the turbine work went back there, and let's find W net for the gas turbine. So WC is equal to H2 minus H1 is equal to C sub P, T2 minus T1, WC is equal to 1.0047, times 650.8 minus 300. WC is equal to 352, 352.4 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is air. WT is equal to H3 minus H4, is equal to C sub P times T3 minus T4. So if I substitute in, I have that WT is equal to 920.7 kilojoules per kilogram. You have the temperatures, you can check. And we get that W net is WT, this is air, WT minus WC is equal to 568.3 kilojoules per kilogram air. And so I can find the total work because I know the mass flow rate. I found the mass flow rate earlier. So I can find the total power of the gas turbine. So W dot net gas turbine is equal to M dot A times W net. So this is equal to 58.07 times 568.3. So this is equal to 33.001 kilowatts. So of the 61,000 something or other of the heat in, 33 was converted into this amount of work. Now what we need to do is to find out how much of the exhaust heat goes in here and find out the turbine work for the steam power plant. So let's go through that and I have to go back and get HAHB, HCHD. So HA is equal to 31.97.6. SA is equal to 6.64 
7, 4. SB is equal to SA. And I'm going to get that SB is equal to S sub F plus XB S sub FG. You can do this and you'll get that XB is 0 0.8. And HB is equal to H sub F plus XB H sub FG. And you'll find out that that is equal to 2105.6 kilojoules per kilogram steam. And HC is 191.8. And HD is HC plus D delta P. So we have HD is equal to 196.8. So it took 5 kilojoules per kilogram to get there. So now let's find the turbine work. So for the steam, so WT is equal to HA minus HB is equal to 3197.8 minus 2105.6. So WT is equal to 1092.2. WP is equal to HD minus HC. That's equal to 5 kilojoules per kilogram. And so I can find the network for the steam is equal to 1087.5 kilojoules. Per kilogram steam.